Good evening. Want to welcome you this evening for Words for the Soul. Praise God. We are on week eight, and God has been doing great things. I've been receiving testimonies and how the Word of God has blessed your life. Um, just want to share something before we get started. We usually do family prayer, and um, my middle daughter Tasha was saying, you know, as we, we pray, she said, God, just let the words um, penetrate the soul resonate to the soul the words that are being said today so my prayer is that when you hear these words from the word of god that they would resonate to your soul whatever you're going through whatever you're encountering someone that you know might need a blessing someone that needs a word of encouragement especially with all the things that are going on you know um we just been praying for the nations praying for our world we see all the different things that are uprising not just the COVID, but how um, unrest, injustice is not being done. So listen tonight as I read these scriptures that the words would encourage your heart. Remember the words of the soul come to intentionally uplift, encourage you, to inspire you, to heal you, to let you know that you are chosen, you are forgiven, you're accepted, and you're loved. So before I read the first scripture, I was reading an article by Dr. Tony Evans, and I just want to share a little bit about that that goes along with my scriptures. He says, reconciliation is all about relationships. To reconcile basically means to restore to friendship. The goal isn't just about repenting from the sin of racism, but it's geared toward developing authentic friendships with different races and cultures than our own. Once we repent from the sin of racism, develop relationships across racial lines, then in unity, we can serve our communities the church is supposed to be the salt and the light of our neighborhood, regardless of the racial demographics. Amen. So as we begin, don't forget to share or start a watch party. Amen. First scripture tonight is 1 John 1 and 9. Tonight I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confessed our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from unrighteousness, our wrongdoings, everything not in conformity to his will and purpose. Thank you, God, for his grace and mercy. 1 John 4 and 20. If anyone says, I love God and hates and works against his Christian brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he's seen and cannot love God whom he has not seen, and this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also unselfishly love his brother and seek the best for him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 through 19. But all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, making us acceptable to him, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, so that by our example we might bring others to him that is that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not counting people's sins against them but canceling them and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation that is the restoration to the favor with god i don't know if you have some uh, relationships that have been strained or been broken but god can reconcile your family your friends the things that you have not seen. Some people have sisters and brothers you haven't talked to in years. But God can reconcile that. Matthew 5, verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. Mighty, mighty. But if that salt has lost its taste or purpose, how can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything. But to be thrown out and walked on by people when they walk away are wet and slippery. You are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but under the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I remember this was one of my first scriptures when I was a child in um, Sunday school. They had us to do memory verses. 
And that means something. We need to continue to teach our children their memory verses, especially now that we're not necessarily going out to the churches, but when you're at home, have them to repeat memory verses. Our identity is to be in Christ first, and everything else should fall underneath. God does not ask people to deny their race or their culture, but he does ask those things to not get in the way of our Christian commitment. Embrace your race, embrace your culture, be who you are, but never let your racial identity interfere with your biblical truth. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ, that is, in him. I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith by adhering to, relying on, completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me and for you. God tells us to fight for the weak, to speak up for those who are without a voice and defend the rights of the oppressed and the marginalized. How is your love for God and the love for others that you're connected to? That's a question for you tonight. Psalms 82 three and four. Vindicate the weak and the fatherless. Do justice and maintain the rights of the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the weak and needy. Rescue them from the hand of the wicked. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. And Jesus replied to him, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first of the greatest commandments. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is unselfishly seek the best or the higher good for others. The whole law and the writings of their prophets depend on these two commandments. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, the Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor and has me to announce to release to pardon, to forgive to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, to set those who are oppressed, those who are downtrodden, those who are bruised, those who are crushed by tragedy, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. We must live out the scope of the gospel to people so they can see our witness as we walk in our growth in the Lord. We must imitate Jesus who gives us the perfect example of how to navigate between the content and the scope of the gospel, how we treat one another. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 talks about the facts of Christ's resurrection. Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news of salvation when I preach to you, which you welcome and accept it on, which you stand by faith. By this faith, you are saved, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. If you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, just superficially and without complete commitment, for I pass unto you as the first importance that I also received that Christ died for our sins according to that which the scriptures foretold. And he was buried and he was um, bodily raised on the third day according to that which the scriptures foretold. I don't know if you saw this, um, the preaching this morning from our Bishop Trevor Alexander. He talked about we're in it to win it, that we have a place that we can confirm the word of God that we will receive the revelation of God and the transformation will come forth. So as you're hearing this word of God, the confirmation is going to come to you what you've been seeking him for. And the confirmation and the transformation will come forth. This CRT. So, hmm? confirmation, revelation, and transformation. That helped me to remember. Amen. Because I've had a little pause there and it said, uh uh, this is what it is. Praise God. Thank God for helpers. Amen. I praise God for my family. Philippians 2. And we laugh and play while we're doing this. And that's a good thing about God that you can just be in his midst and enjoy the presence of God. Second, um, Philippians 2, 12 through 13. So then, my dear ones, 
just as you have always obeyed my instructions and enthusiasms, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Continue to work out your salvation, that is to cultivate it, to bring it to the full effect. Actively pursue spiritual maturity, not stay obeyed, but pursue spiritual maturity with the awe-inspired fear and trembling using serious caution and critical evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Jesus. Oh, I like how that says that. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you. But to will and to work, that is strengthening, encouraging, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. Thank you, Jesus. I can clap for that. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. You want to put amen in the, the content area? Do amen. Praise God. The word is rich. It gives me joy. Psalms 89 and 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. Galatians 6 and 10. So then, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially being a blessing to those of the household of faith, the born-again believers. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 22 and 3. Thus says the Lord, execute justice and righteousness and rescue the ones who have been robbed from the hand of his oppressor and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless or the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. Micah 6 and 8. He has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? Except to be just, to love, and to be diligently. Practice kindness, compassion, and to walk humbly with your God. Setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. My God, my God. Thank you, Jesus, that God will help us to stay humble and to do what is right. Acts 17 and 26. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined their appointment times and the boundaries of their land and territories. 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord does not delay as though he was unable to act and is not slow about his promises as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient towards you. Thank you, God. I thank him that he's patient for me because I don't always move when he tells me to move, but he gives me his grace to get into a place where I need to be and, and put myself into position, not wishing any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. John 13 and 35, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples. Can I get a witness? Are you a disciple? You do a hand wave. And if you know someone who needs to be a disciple, share this word today, words for the soul. If you have love and unselfish concern for one another, Romans 13 and 8. Oh, nothing to anyone except to love and seek the best for one another. For he who unselfishly loves his neighbor has fulfilled the essence of the law, law relating to one's fellow man. A closing prayer tonight as we end with words for the soul I think about 2nd Thessalonians 3 1 and 2 the heart of the king is in your hand and you will turn it whichever way you choose so as we pray God I ask that you would direct the heart and the minds of those that are leaders in our nation God our presidents those who are in our city officials our state and our local international leaders everywhere that you would bless them that you would heal them God that you would cover our, our, our country, God, that your word would go forth, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we continue to pray for those who don't know you, but come to know you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. You told us that you would position those in leadership, that they would lead in integrity, God. So we pray those that are um, in an official position, that they would lead with integrity, God. We pray for those who are getting ready to be... Um, that are going through the election now, God, and we're voting. If you haven't voted, God, during this time, the people would get up and vote. So we thank you that you would give us to um, choose the person, God, according to your will, that will stand up and do what is right. 
for our nation, for our city, for our government, around this world. God, in the name of Jesus, as we touch and agree right now, we know that God is able and there is nothing too hard for God. We know that. No matter what we see, God is our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and the end. And Lord, we trust you and we lift our nation up to you and we will continue to pray. And we thank you for words of the soul that went forth on tonight because we know they have accomplished what you have sent them to do. They have resonated to someone's soul to let them know that they are loved, they are forgiven, that they are precious in God's sight. So thank you again for joining me. And if you've not had a chance to share, please share and let them know that Words for the Soul is coming from my name, name is Overseer M. Alexander. I look forward to seeing you again on next Sunday at 6 o'clock. Blessings unto you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen.